We start today with the investigation into a series of suspicious packages and suspected pipe bombs being mailed to high-profile critics of President Trump. Former Vice President Joe Biden and actor Robert De Niro are the latest people to be sent these packages. Now, police across the country have increased patrols and security around a possible targets, including former President Jimmy Carter. The FBI is leading a criminal investigation, but they have yet to name any suspects or motives. It should come as no surprise that a new Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research poll found that a majority of Americans say the United States is divided. The survey found that 8 in 10 Americans think the country is greatly divided about important values. Only 20 percent of the respondents through the country thought the country would become less divided in the near future. And 39 percent think it will only get worse. So what brought us to this point in the United States? Why are we so divided as a nation? Let's look at the recent history of vitriol in politics amongst Americans. In May of 2017, Kathy Griffin posed with Donald Trump in a severed head to President Trump. Griffin eventually did apologize, saying that she did not mean it as a threat. She subsequently was fired from CNN's New Year's Eve broadcast and had to cancel the remainder of her 2017 tour. In June of 2017, James Thomas Hodkinson opened fire on a team of Republican lawmakers who were practicing for the annual congressional baseball game. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise was shot, along with a Capitol Police officer, a congressional aide, and a lobbyist for Tyson Foods. The shooter was a known supporter of Bernie Sanders and had previously been active on the left. We have also seen numerous accounts of nonviolent divisions as well. In June of 2018, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked to leave a restaurant in Lexington by the owner due to her work defending and promoting President Trump's policies as the press secretary. Following the incident with Huckabee Sanders, Representative Maxine Waters, a Democrat from California, called on Americans to force Trump officials out of businesses. Now, earlier this month, the Proud Boys, a far-right racist organization founded by Vice co-founder Gavin McInnes, engaged in a brawl with protesters following a speech by McInnes at the Metropolitan Republican Club in Manhattan. Nine Proud Boys and three members of Antifa were arrested after the altercation. And just this weekend, we saw House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi harassed by a group of angry protesters while the representative was entering a restaurant in Florida for a campaign stop. She was sworn by a group of Trump-supporting Cuban-Americans. The mob screamed expletives at the former Speaker of the House and told her socialism sucks. And that leads us to the event of the last 48 hours. And the question every American is wondering in politics, is this the new norm? Only time will tell. For more on the divide in America, we are joined by attorney and former Georgia State Representative LaDawn Jones and Representative Stratus Chris Nye Wayne. Thanks for joining me. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. LaDawn, what can be done to bridge this division in the U.S. right now? You know, I, I'm not sure. You know, in reality, for something to be done, that means that one of these two sides, these extreme sides, because that's what we have going on, are two separate extreme sides with different ideologies about where America should head. What, some side has to give up. And although I don't want to continue the strife that's going on in our country as a progressive, if we're going to fight this out, I want America to be a country that has health care for all and income equality and safe communities. And so I don't know if there is a resolve other than one side simply giving up. Well, Chris, 39 percent of Americans believe the division is only going to get greater. Can you agree with that? Probably for the time being. I think after the elections, I think there will be, this will subside. I think it's almost sort of like a, you know, tornado. I mean, eventually it will sort of, sort of fade out. This is a, it's a very, it's a very, um, uh, you know, polarizing time with so much power shifting that's happened over the last couple of years. And it's almost as if voters have sort of gravitated either harder to the left or harder to the right. So it, I think after the elections, it'll probably fade out. But for now, it's, you know, it is certainly a very intense time in American politics. So Chris, has these constant protests against the president helped to create this division, do you think? 
Probably. I mean, I think it's just sort of strengthened the bases. It strengthens, you know, folks. I mean, it's it's come to the point where people are so strong in their own beliefs, they just view things with that certain lens of bias, where someone is more favorable towards their particular candidate, regardless of reason. So, you know, my prescription for getting through this would be you have to listen to someone, and then you have to fight with your ideas and explain yourself. And there's very few sort of politico people these days that really do that. It's more just throw the ch throw the cheap shot duck and then move on. So I think that this is just the way it is for now. So LaDon, does this division, do you think, transcend politics? Absolutely. I think I think it, it, it transcended politics from the beginning because we're talking about what happens in our local communities, in our local governments, in our local schools, on our streets and on our neighborhoods. Um, it, America has long been a country that has been segregated by geography. And now we're seeing that segregation via geography also play into our political world. Uh, I, I agree that I think both sides have to first seek to understand and then seek to, to be understood by the other side. But unfortunately, a lot of Americans are simply uh, reiterating what they hear on television and not really taking a close look at where our commonalities uh, a lot because everybody has this tenseness going on right now. Absolutely. So LaDon is a former elected um, official. And, and do we need to see lawmakers together actually take a very strong stance against the path that we're headed down? I, absolutely. So the first thing that I think lawmakers need to do is explain to people, 90 percent of the things that we vote on in your state houses and in your federal houses are bipartisan measures that pass with an overwhelming majority of both sides. Americans tend to agree on the things that are important to us. But there are some issues that keep us divided. Guns, abortion, women's rights, health care. These things uh, have continued to keep us divided over the years. But if we keep in mind, if our our elected leaders help to remind people that we're more alike than we are different and take the lead by bringing down the rhetoric. We do not all have to follow the path that our president has taken us down on. We can all speak more politely, but directly and based on facts. Okay, so Chris, I mean, she pointed out right there, a lot of the blame is being put on, at the President Trump's feet. Is that legit for the people to be making this claim that all of this is because of him? No, I mean, I agree with 90% of what my colleague representative just said. The only 10% I would disagree with is that it's just the president. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, look at the Senate. Senate Democrats just absolutely destroyed the, the custom and process for a uh, Supreme Court nomination uh, based upon politics. You know, there, there was no interest in finding the truth. It was about doing a hit job. It backfired. And now the problem we all have is now it's just that even the issue of uh, you know, sexual assault has become just completely polarized where we can't even get to the root of those issues. So it all starts with, with us. It starts with individuals. It starts with people. It starts at the local level. Um, but no, you can't be blaming someone because, you know, as the old saying says, there's, you know, fingers pointing, more fingers pointing back at you. So. Absolutely. Well, Chris LaDon, thank you for joining us and thank you for having a civil conversation. I hope the rest of America follows your example. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.